Hey, Pastor Gary here for another Wednesday Word. Hope you're doing well today. I'm coming to you from um, upstairs at the Spring Campus uh, in the Children's Church, one of the, the rooms here at the at the Spring Campus. And, uh, you know, just get, being up here and, and looking uh, around just brings back a lot of memories. I used to teach in this classroom, actually, when I was uh, a Children's Church leader uh, and during Awanas. So Sunday morning, Sunday evenings, Wednesday nights, you know, we would have Children's Church. Um, we would be up here and just thinking back of all the kids that have come through our Children's Church. Um, and, you know, from when they were, you know, four or five six years old to now they're adults and in, in big church, you know, and, and some have moved on. And, uh, but I just, uh, you know, think back and, and just see how young they were getting to, to learn about God and, 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 and how much God loved them. It truly is a blessing. I'd like to uh, take the opportunity just to thank those, uh, those leaders in children's church, both here at spring campus and Magnolia. Um, you know, you give up, uh, so much of your time and yes it's for the kingdom uh, but while we're in church uh, you're taking care of our kids so thank you so much for for doing that for uh, using your gift for the ministry and for all that you do you know and taking time out of your days uh, and weeks to prepare for our kids and to to you know just love on them and share jesus with them so thank you so much for doing that uh, you truly are a blessing. If you're, you want to get more information about being involved, if you're thinking about being in the Children's Church, uh, contact uh, you know the leader um, at at either campus, um, Ashley over at the Magnolia campus, and then Karen uh, Jones at the Spring campus. Of course, you can always contact the church, talk to Pastor Matt or Pastor Tim uh, regarding that, uh, you know, regarding that ministry. And I'm sure they'll be, uh, they would love to speak to you, give you more information about becoming a leader or a volunteer or, or you know, just coming up to check it out. Uh, you know, I, I, in my own, I'm biased, of course, but I think that, you know, you know, people should come up and, and at least see what it's like up here um, and, and see just the kids getting so excited about uh, about learning, about learning about Jesus and how much God loves them. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it really is a blessing. So anyway, I uh, just, uh, you know, don't want to chase that rabbit too long. But uh, it, it, again, I'm coming to you from upstairs in the children's wing at the Spring Campus. Today, uh, I'm going to be in Hebrews. And so uh, go ahead and get your Bibles open to Hebrews 12. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, I thank you, Father, that that you've given us the Bible, Father, that we can always refer back to, Father, Father, that, you know, this is how you speak, one of the ways that you speak to us, Father, and we thank you for that, Father. We thank you for the relationship that we have with you, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do in our lives, Father. The, you know, we might call it good times and bad times, Father, but we know that you are always with us, Father. Father, we thank you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, you know, like most sports, running involves having endurance. Any any sport that you play, there's endurance, be it football, basketball, baseball, you know, whatever, lacrosse, at running, at all, you have to have endurance. You got to build that up. And, and the same is true in our faith. If we look at Hebrews 12 verses 1 through 3, uh, you know, this is what the writer of Hebrews says. It says, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. As we live our lives, we quickly learn that life is not a sprint. It's a long distance race. It's a marathon. That's why in, in, in 2 Timothy 4, 7, Paul wrote when he was sitting in, in the Roman jail, he wrote this as he was finishing his letter. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course or race, depending on your translation. I have kept the faith. With any type of long distance race, you have to follow the markers. There's always markers set up. 
so that you're just not running in a straight line because you running straight might not be where the end is, uh, the finish line. So you always got to follow the markers. You got to turn right. You got to go straight. You got to turn left. You got to go up the hill, go down the hill. You follow the course which has been laid out. That's what Paul was saying about the race. He followed the course, the plan which God had set out before him. See, we can't decide, well, I'm not feeling like it today. I'm going to take a shortcut. Nobody will notice. You can't look at a particular hill and say, that hill just looks too steep. I'll just skip it. You have to run the race marked out for you. And the same, it's the same way in our lives. God has gone before us. He's gone ahead of us and planted these markers so that we know where to go. And the writer of Hebrews tells us in verse one, let us run with endurance the race that has that is set before us. It's interesting that the author of Hebrews chooses the metaphor of the long distance race to illustrate the Christian life. See, the Christian life is a matter of endurance. So it, there's struggle, there's difficulty. There is victory. We have victories in this world and, and there's no greater victory than when we cross the finish line and we enter into heaven. But between now and then, it can be a struggle. The word race in Greek is agon, and it literally means a struggle, a grueling conflict. It's where we get our English word agony. So literally, the author says, let us run with endurance, the race or conflict or struggle set before us. If you've run a long distance race, you know what agony is. I was talking to one of our members this past Sunday, and she just completed a long distance race or, or a marathon. She said that, you know, her legs were felt like jello, that they were burning, but she finished. See, it, it's during that time when you have those long distance runs or any run for, you know, you have to build up that endurance, but your entire body hurts. You feel like your lungs are going to explode. Your legs are again are like jello. It's agony. It's a struggle. So this agony is a picture of the Christian life. And we are all spiritual athletes on the racetracks, living for the Lord, running the race that has been set before us by God. Now, sometimes while we're in that race, we struggle and we need some encouragement. The writer tells us that we've got some encouragers. Let's go back to verse one. It says, therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, a couple of questions came to my mind when I read that verse, right? It says, therefore, since we have such, we, we have so great a cloud of witnesses. What is the cloud of witnesses and who is in it? Who's in it? Notice the first word of that verse, therefore. Anytime we see that word, therefore, it means that we got to look back. So when we read, therefore, we got to go back because the author's finishing a thought. It says, therefore. And so this cloud of witnesses is comprised of the great men and women of faith in the Old Testament. And what's encouraging us, what's encouraging about this list of faithful people is that virtually all of them are also described in scripture as weak and sinful. They weren't perfect. These great people of faith are in the stands. Picture Moses, Amos, Rahab, Jeremiah, Jacob, Abraham, Sarah, and thousands more in the stands screaming, keep going. You can do it. We did it. So can you. Think about it. Jacob was a liar, a man who, who wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do business with. He cheated his father and his brother. Jacob is in the stand saying, I know how you feel. Keep on going. Moses killed a man and ran. He didn't want to serve God. He complained that nobody would believe him. He stuttered. He had excuses. But Moses is in the stands. He's screaming. I know what it feels like when you want to give up, but keep on running. Rahab. She's there. She's saying, you think you're a sinner? Look at me, but God saved me and redeemed me. God can, can and will save you. Don't give up. So many examples of how God used people who were not perfect. And those are the witnesses who are pulling for you, cheering for you, encouraging you to succeed. Each race is unique to who you are. We tend to compare ourselves with others. You know, uh, when our race seems tough, it, it, it's easy to look at somebody else's race and say, well, if I had their race to run, no problem. I could handle that. If I had their paycheck, I could easily run the race and that set out before me. If I had a spouse who understood, I could easily have the endurance, the patience. If I had their faith, imagine what I could do for the kingdom. 
We can rationalize and justify to the point where we say it's okay for me to quit because I haven't been given what everybody else has been given. I don't have to run with endurance because my course is so much harder than others. But God says, I want you to run this race. This is the course I've mapped out for you. This is what I'm holding you accountable for. Don't think about others. You just look at me and together we will run this race. See, if you're, gonna, if you're going to finish, you've got to keep running until you reach the finish line. Like with anything that we start, in the beginning, you feel great, right? It doesn't matter if you're, if you're training, uh, exercise, whatever it is. At the beginning, you feel great. You have the strength, the stamina, the passion, the excitement. But as the race moves on, we become tired. Our mind wanders. We get impatient. People seem to pass us up. We start feeling pain, our muscles hurt, our legs feel like jello, and you feel totally different than when we than when you started. Oftentimes, when, when we feel this pain, we think to ourselves, this hurts, this hurts, it must not be from God. Pain doesn't mean it's no longer God's will. In the 1992 Olympics, during the semifinals of the 400 meter uh, race, um, 18 seconds into the race, uh, one of the British runners tore, uh, tore his hamstring. He felt it pop, and he immediately went down. And so he, there he was in a crowded, you know, uh, uh, arena, center stage in the semifinal of the 400-meter race at the Olympics. And he was on his knees in pain. Now, 18 seconds in, he could have given up, but he got up. And he started hobbling. You know, officials came running to him. And, you know, told him to quit, try to get him to stop. And he kept going. And he, so he began to limp. And, 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 and all of a sudden he felt somebody lift him up. His father had come out of the stands and helped his son finish the race. You see, it's your race to run, but know that God is with you. Sometimes the race God calls us to run is filled with pain. But if God has called you to run this race, then he wants you to finish this race. He promises that he will be there with you just as that, ra- that runner's father was with him. Our father is with us. And so when we feel that pain, when we feel like we want to stop, when others are telling us to stop, he is there lifting us up, helping us and, and helping us finish the race and cross the finish line. He promises that he'll be there. And so will those witnesses. We may get knocked down a time or two. We may not succeed the way we feel or or hope that we would succeed. But even after you've been knocked down, you get up and you continue this race. Some of you have been knocked down. Maybe you've, you've made some wrong decisions. Maybe others have done you wrong. When you, when you were knocked down, maybe we feel embarrassed or ashamed. Maybe you feel depressed. And at times we want to hide. We, all we want to do is go home and get in bed and stay there. That's the worst thing that we could do. God's word to you is to get up and run, get up and walk, get up and crawl, do something to continue to move forward. Forget those that have hurt you. Forget what is behind you. Run for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You still have a race ahead of you. Philippians 1 6 doesn't say, We who begin a good, he who, I'm sorry, he who began a good work in you will perfect it. Until the days you fall and fail on the track. It doesn't say that. It says he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Jesus looked at Peter and told him, you're going to deny me. But later Jesus told him, when you get up after you fall and continue to run the race, strengthen your brothers, follow God's calling on your purpose. Don't stay down. This race, your life, it's grueling. But God promises that he will not abandon us. He will never set us on the wrong course. He has the perfect plan. Even when it doesn't seem perfect to us, remember, he's there from the start of the race and he will he's there throughout the race. And he will certainly be there at the end of the race where we will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I hope you found this uh devotional, encouraging. 
especially for for those that are in that those moments where they just want to give up. Know that God is with you. There's a lot of things going on, turmoil, you know, depression, you know, just so much can going on with the economy, with politics. But we don't look for those things for encouragement. We look to God for encouragement. We look to God for strength because he's already he's already mapped our course. He's already mapped our race and he's there running it with us. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God. Father, I do pray for endurance, Father. I pray for those right now that are hurting, Father. I pray for those that are on their knees, not knowing what to do, Father. I pray that they, they you give them the strength, Father, to stand, to crawl, to continue to move forward, Father, knowing that you are with them right now, Father. Let them block out those that are telling them to quit, Father, and seek your face, Father. Father, we thank you for all things, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. A couple of announcements. Um, Don't forget we have church on Sunday, of course. Uh, This Sunday at the Spring Campus, we will have our Journey 101. If uh, you're interested to know more about our church or you've recently joined our church and you want to go through our our membership class, it's going to be this Sunday at 3 o'clock at the Spring Campus. Uh, It's about an hour, hour and a half um, we'll have a time of fellowship. Again, more opportunity to learn more about our church. If you have any questions, definitely be the time to bring them up. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in church, either in person or online. Now, if you're coming to church in person, uh, I know I've said it and we've said it multiple times, but I encourage you, please continue to wear your mask. You know, we want people to come back to church. We want people to come to church. Um, and, and if it's masks that are keeping people away, uh, then wear your mask. Uh, you know, wear your mask as you come in until you sit down, especially in the foyer. There's so much uh, foot traffic there. I just encourage you um, to continue to wear your mask uh, as you come into the church and then as you leave the church. Um, I, it would definitely, um, you know, I, I think it would give a sense of peace to those that are still on the fence about coming back or not. Uh, and and so if it's one thing, if that's one thing that we can do, then let's just do it. Amen. Amen. Well, with that being said, God bless. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday.